Good afternoon. I'm Tom Butcher here at the Zero Project Conference in Vienna. And um, I am lucky to have two amazing ladies with me. One, sadly, only virtually this year, and one actually in person. So my virtual friend is Amy Knopf, and my real friend, not real really, is <laughs> Kathy Johnson, who is on my right. And both of them come from St. Cloud State University. And um, I'm now going to hand it over to you in order to give me a brief background on each of your individual works in the area of advocacy and diplomacy. So I'm actually going to start, Amy, with Kathy. Okay, sounds great. So yes, I'm Katherine Johnson from St. Cloud State University, and my journey in disability inclusion and advocacy and diplomacy started in the year 2000. I joined a Gallaudet University uh, delegation to China as a teacher who was deaf and hard of hearing in public education, and it was a game changer for me. It was actually life-changing. And the three weeks that I had in China visiting schools for the deaf and meeting the deaf community, and I came home with more questions that I had brought to China. And I knew I needed to learn more. So that was my catalyst for going back for my PhD, which I did in international development focused on deaf education in China. And so now I'll take that journey from 2000 to 2022. Throughout the last 22 years, which sounds like a really long time, uh, but throughout the last 22 years, I have continued the journey in China and switched from public education to higher education and love my job at St. Cloud State. And I started in the Department of Special Education and then had the privilege and the honor to host a Confucius Institute. So I was the director of a Confucius Institute and we were able to integrate all of our disability advocacy at our university into the work of the Confucius Institute, the only one globally that really had that as a core value. So I'm very grateful to our friends in China for the support of the Confucius Institute, which regretfully we had to close at the end of December, but the work carries on. And in one of the trips to China, I had brought a colleague along because we got along really well and why not bring someone to China that you get along really well with? That was in 2014. Amy, share your story of China. Over to you, Amy. Yeah, so I... Over to Hi. you. Yeah. Um, I think there's a little delay, so I'm not sure when I'm able to speak or not. You're good. I apologize. Do you want me to just go on? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. I am so sad that I'm not with you today, uh, but I'm looking forward to being with you in person next year uh, for the Zero Project. Um, I guess my journey started at birth. <laughs> I was born with a disability. <laughs> and um, uh, my father also uh, had an accident when I was very young. And so he had a very severe disability after his accident. And so I have grown up being an advocate. Um, I've worked in the area of um, um, working with deaf and hard of hearing. And I worked as a researcher before I uh, started my job at St. Cloud State University. And, but once I started at St. Cloud State University in 2013, the first faculty member I met at a conference was Kathy Johnson. <laughs> and she said, you have to come to China with us. And so the very next year I was able to go to China and that's when my international advocacy began. And so I'm really proud of the work that we have been doing uh, we have uh, been doing the work of our center, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, all these years. So um, to be able to finalize it into, um, into a facility that is really going to continue to promote the things that we have been doing as a passion project uh, for the last um, almost uh, 10 years, I guess, is, uh, is really, it's, I, I think it's just a blessing for us to be able to do the work that we love. Mm, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, that's really, really good. <laughs> and can, can we go from there for both of you um, to tell me and us about your um, new Center on International Disability and Advocacy and Diplomacy? Right. So I'll start, Ames. Is that okay? Okay. So our Center for International Disability Advocacy and Diplomacy, which we call CDAD, is uh, under, housed under the office of the president. We have a woman president, 
President Robin Walker, and she herself has demonstrated a strong commitment to this work on the international platform. Uh, for example, we actually launched our center in Dubai at Dubai Expo 2020 and uh, in the USA Pavilion at a summit for women with disabilities. And uh, her commitment is what gives us the ability to uh, work in this global platform. So our center has six different areas of focus. The first one is global academies. And for an example, we, with the continued work in China, we're developing a certificate on deaf leadership and advocacy, really working to empower and build capacity within the deaf community in China for leadership uh, and advocacy work there. And then I have to put, look at my little cheat sheet, Amy. Then my other area of responsibility is policy and advocacy. And again, um, that's a, a continual um, area of focus, and especially with the CRPD, we all know that within this community, and working on the SDGs. And uh, Amy and I are about the same age, and we're not going to retire for about 50 more years because there's so much work to do. <laughs> but what we do work to do through the advocacy and policy is um, mentor younger women with disabilities. For example, we had the panel, The Future is Female, yesterday, and had three amazing young women who are leaders uh, in the disability advocacy field. And then the final area, I don't to get it. The final area that I work on, oh, this one is easy for me because this is where I, what the skill set I get from my mother, networking. <laughs> and so I am here networking at the Zero Project Conference. Most of the presentations that I'm seeing, as I'm watching them, I find the individual on LinkedIn and say, will you be my friend? <laughs> so looking for areas to partner, and Amy will share her areas of responsibility with the center. Great. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, so um, as Kathy said, we have six strategic areas of focus and Kathy is going to direct the three areas she just talked about and I'll be responsible for our education and training. Um, and in our education and training, we'll be offering workshops, conferences, micro badges, uh, micro credentials, certificates and degree programs. Uh, and we also will have a strategic focus on assistive technology and accessibility. Right now at St. Cloud State, we have an assistive technology lab that's open uh, to the students on campus, staff, faculty, but also to the community. It is a great place for people to come and learn. We want to make that um, a virtual assistive technology lab so that it's open to the global community. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a, an area that we could partner with people to be able to share your assistive technology through the virtual lab. Mm -hmm. And then the final area that I'll be uh, directing is research and de uh, development. So um, I, I will have, I have to give some, uh, a shout out to the Harkin Institute mm. because what really allowed me to be able to do this work, uh, with Kathy in China and really start the international advocacy work that I have been doing is, uh, through a Harkin fellowship. And, um, the first research project that we worked on was the Harkin fellowship looking at employment and education outcomes. Uh, of deaf and hard of hearing between the U.S. and China, and that allowed us to really build on the work that we have been, that Kathy had been doing in China, and that I started to do in China. And really, I think a lot of the things that we're doing now is the direct outcome of that. So I'd like to thank the Harkin Institute for that. And um, I just really want to say that the the mission of the center is to be an innovation global hub. So we want to be able to promote in advance scholarship, yeah. knowledge and understanding of disability rights, um, advocacy through inclusive diplomacy, interdisciplinary education, research and strategic partners. So we're hoping to be able to uh, not just be a center that produces things and provides training, we also hope to be a center that has inclusive uh, training. So having people with disabilities uh, globally be able to come to St. Cloud State develop leadership skills, get involved in research, get involved in our conferences and training, develop skills that they can then go back to their home countries and then um, you know, be able to 
uh, grow their projects there. Mm. Great. Thank you so much, Amy. And um, I, we just had a note. We've got five minutes left. Five. So I'm just uh, going to uh, start again. <laughs> I'm going to ask both of you one last question, which is, uh, and it's to do with your work. Amy, what avenues do you see there to be for partnership to promote this work and the SDGs? And you have two minutes starting from now. <laughs> Yes, I think there's a lot of avenues that people can partner with us. Um, one thing that we haven't even mentioned yet was last year we established a World Events Disability Coalition in which um, we have um, probably around 25 members right now uh, who are looking at inclusion and advocacy of world events. So we're really interested in looking at those spaces that are not accessible like COP26, was, it was just not accessible. It wasn't appropriate. It wasn't acceptable. And so these um, kinds of things are not going to change with ha without bringing everyone to the table and saying, we have to make noise and we have to have a voice. So that's one way. Another way is um, we, we want you to help us identify people with disabilities who would benefit from fellowship projects, uh, from leadership and training, and um, for maybe even taking some of our uh, education and training, partner with us on um, doing some of those education and training uh, as a core value uh, we, is inclusive diplomacy. And so um, I would not be doing a training on deaf and hard of hearing. I'm not deaf or hard of hearing. So we are uh, making sure a core value is nothing uh, about us without us and making sure that we have the right people at the table doing those um, kinds of work for us. Great. Thank you very much indeed, Amy. And Kathy, over to you for the last sure. word. Sure. One thing Amy forgot, my dear, is recruitment of students for her program in yes. counseling oh. and rehabilitation studies. So please do go to our website if you're interested in pursuing a master's degree in counseling and rehabilitation studies. Another area is, for example, maximizing the strengths of our partners. Last night I was able to attend the first ambassador circle for the Zero Project, and I met with ambassadors from different countries, uh, from the embassies in Austria, and had the opportunity to talk about how can we work to support you and your vision and mission and goals of inclusive diplomacy, which starts at that level. But individuals who are young can have disability inclusion and diplomacy through uh, inclusive educational exchange is a big area of focus for us, leading by example and working with and inviting people to our LinkedIn page. Please join us and follow us. It's brand new before coming here. Find us on LinkedIn and we'll get connected and find out how we can partner together. Great. Ladies, Thank you so much. That's absolutely great. I really wanted to find out what was happening at the center. <laughs> I certainly do now, um, but I'm going to try and find out more. And I would suggest everybody else who's interested in finds out themselves more. Great. Many, many thanks. Amy, yep. thanks for joining us. Kathy, yeah, thank thanks you. for joining us. Yep. Look after yourselves and the best of luck. All right. And I just want to say thank, thank you, you to my husband, Phil, and my family for supporting me because none of this would have been possible without my amazing husband, <laughs> Phil. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.